gives us a chance to reflect on all those people in our life that we have loved and lost physically, but still have spiritually and emotionally in our life, to remind us to live faithfully so that when we depart, we will be with them. Lord, we give the Father and the Son to the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, the Lord, make us worth to remember the faithful departed, who profess their faith in you and receive your body and blood as nourishment and blessings. Grant them rest and may they share in your eternal banquet and your ever
loving kindness and tender mercy, you descend into the realm of the dead, bringing it life and resurrection. We ask you to accept the fragrance of our incense and our prayer. Place at your right hand the departed who believed in you, and give them rest in your glorious dwellings, that with the living they may worship you, glorify your divinity, and thank you in your Father, your Holy Spirit, forever.
be with you. From the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks for the word of the living God. The Lord Jesus says, there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sword, who longed to satisfy his hunger. And what doubt from the rich man's table, even the dog would come and lick his sword. The more the poor man died, and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried in Hades, where he was being tormented. He looked up and saw Abraham far away, with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these things. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime, you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner, evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so. And no one can cross from there to us, he said. Then, Father, I beg you to send them to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them, he said. No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. This is the truth. Peace be with you. I'm 
and pain 
continue right on. This message here is to change our mind about it while it can still be changed. The next part, we come to the last part. I can't understand why if somebody came back from the dead that it would not convince somebody to change their ways. And they're saying, well, don't bother. It's too late because uh, you had the prophets, you had Moses, and you have, you're going to have me, Jesus who died and came back to life. But those thoughts just aren't in their minds. That's not how they think. If they see somebody hurting, it's their own fault. If somebody suffering and struggling, they made terrible decisions and they deserve that. Often people say, well, let's help our own before we help the others. I wish I had a list of all those people who say that to see if they actually are helping any of their own. My experience, and I'm not claiming this to be accurate and right, but my hunch is that people who use that as an excuse to not help others probably are not helping the own that they're referring to either. I could be wrong. You know, you can investigate it on your own. I'm not trying to prove anything here. Other than that, <laughs> what Jesus is looking for in me is that if I have the ability to heal and comfort the wounded, I better be doing it. If I have the means to keep a person from starving to death and going to bed hungry, I should be doing something about it. For some people, it means they're going to give them something to eat. For other people, with their talents and gifts, they're going to do all the things that are necessary to reduce the probability of it. That's the good side of government and politics. But that cannot happen without people, individuals who truly believe and care and have the compassion and the concern and don't let their judgments get in the way of the mind of Christ. And that's the problem here. The rich man didn't try to have the mind of God. He had the mind of the conversations between maybe his brothers. Instead of paying attention to the conversation of the prophets, and that's why it was useless to try it again. Who has control over your thoughts and mind? Now, I would say I don't always have control over my thoughts and minds, and it can get me in trouble. The solution has always been to work through them with the mind of Jesus Christ, to challenge me to guide me, to let go, and hold on to him. This is what makes a person faithful when they depart from this world.
Amen. Uh -huh. 
Morgan.